Hey everyone, welcome to A Kind Life. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, this is actually a celebration of my five-year vegan anniversary. So I guess where to begin? So back in 2010, I learned about Damien Manda, an ex-Australian Navy clearance diver and sniper. When he decided to leave the military, he went over to Africa to fight the war on poaching. Or many of you probably listened to my previous podcasts, which go into a lot more detail about, you know, this whole story. But I guess the main thing to know here is that I was just absolutely in awe. I saw his story on a current affair and just, I was really inspired by everything that he had decided. I I suppose, first of all, like everything he decided to give up, you know, creature comforts of life and security of being in a well-paid job and, you know, having the security of being in Australia and And he just gave that all up, sold all his properties and went over to Africa and started the International Anti-Poaching Foundation. You know, he saw the horrors on the ground, what was happening to animals, but also he just knew that he had the skills to be able to, you know, apply himself and help in the war on poaching. So fast forward, um, it was seven years in 2017. And I had this incredible opportunity to speak to Damien. You know, I took a bit of a leap of faith, I guess you could say, and I reached out to the International Anti-Poaching Foundation and asked to speak to Damien for a leadership program I was doing. And I was super lucky um, that he actually said yes. And I had the opportunity to speak to him over a WhatsApp call for about an hour. And it was an incredible opportunity to learn, you know, a lot about him personally and what he's done with the foundation. But also, you know, he actually was really kind and took an interest in, you know, me and what I was doing in my life. And at the end of the conversation, um, you know, it was just one thing he said to me. Uh, He knew at the time that I had studied environmental science and that I was working in um, an environmental field. And, you know, he said to me that uh, conservation is a lifetime job, not a part-time commitment. And that really stuck with me. It's really funny. A lot of people, when I when I say that to people, they kind of, it doesn't click, you know, it doesn't make sense. But I guess for me, having studied environmental science and being really passionate about, you know, the environment and the animals and the wildlife that we share this world with, I kind of just really understood that, you know, being at this time I was vegetarian and I, and I understood that that wasn't enough. And I literally went <laughs> vegan overnight. I um, finished what was in my fridge that weekend and on the Monday I was vegan. That one thing he said to me really started this incredible path that, you know, I've been on for the last five years. And I'm super grateful because, you know, none of this, I really, I guess I could say that, you know, I attribute everything that I'm super passionate about in my life and my purpose. I really attribute that to that conversation I had with Damien because, you know, my life has has wandered down this path thanks to that conversation. This um this weekend is my five year vegan anniversary. This episode will go live um the day after on Monday the fifth of September, and yeah, I really just wanted to do something to thank Damien and the incredible work that all his staff do at the International Anti Poaching Foundation, because you know they are the first line of defense in Africa protecting wildlife you know there's the keystone species so animals like rhinos and elephants but since listening to Damien it's really you know critical that we don't just think of these large species you know there's a whole ecosystem of animals that need to be protected and that yes when we do protect the large species such as elephant and rhino it it protects all the animals all the way down to you know small birds and insects and things so Yeah, these guys really do incredible work on the ground. They risk their lives on a daily basis. You know, they walk into situations that none of us would want to face, whether it be seeing animals, you know, caught in snares or facing, you know, poaching, like quite militarized poaching groups, um, you know, even things like getting information that allows them to go in and do arrests. So, you know, they're the first line of defense on the ground. And I was pretty shocked when I learned that, you know, a rhino dies every eight hours and an elephant every 15 minutes in Africa. Those stats really shocked me. Fuels my fire and passion for wanting to help and give back to the Anti-Poaching Foundation. And um, I guess just for anyone who isn't aware of Damien's organization, um, he founded it back in 2009. And basically, you know, he's grown it over the years to now, what it is now is, you know, an organization of over 500 staff. They're protecting over 8 million hectares. 
And, you know, they found that having their, their presence in Africa in the areas and the countries that they are in has actually reduced poaching by 80% and there's been a 399% increase in wildlife in the areas that they're working, which is really incredible. And, you know, they're working towards this goal of protecting over 20 million acres um, at, by having 1,000 staff, which will be by 2026. So it's a really huge goal that his organisation has and that, you know, the whole team is working towards being able to achieve in a short number of years. So I can imagine you're all sitting there thinking, you know, what can we do? What's she going to do to help? What's this, you know, idea that she has? So basically I have decided that, well, I reached out to Damien and I said that I wanted to do a fundraiser. He actually has no idea what it is, <laughs> but I just said that I wanted to do a fundraiser and I had this idea of raising $3,000 and it was just a target I had in my mind. And I asked him, you know, what that would help fund on the ground over there. And I was really surprised to learn that that would actually fund a ranger, an anti-poaching ranger on the ground for a year in Africa. So that was really, it was really cool, actually, because when I learned that, I thought, wow, like there's obviously a reason why in my mind I picked $3,000. So it was really cool that it actually aligned to a salary for a ranger on the ground. And I can imagine everyone at home is being like, oh yeah, how's she going to raise $3,000? So I've decided to do something a little bit outrageous. Um, there's a little bit of an incentive there. Basically, what I've decided to do is in the month of September, I'll be calling on donations to get to the $3,000 goal. And when I do, I will shave my head. I know, pretty freaking crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, and yes, I do like my hair. I, some people I've told only uh, like some of my nearest and dearest and um, their first reaction is, oh, like, do you want to shave your head? No, I don't want to shave my head. But the point is, is that, you know, what they do on the ground in Africa is just absolutely incredible and they risk their lives on a daily basis. And for me, you know, I think... Like we are over here in Australia where, you know, in our creature comforts, in warm houses, you know, driving cars, having food in a supermarket, and it's nothing compared to what these guys face on a daily basis. And in my mind, I just think, you know, yes, I need to do something a little bit outrageous that is going to encourage people to raise these funds. But also at the end of the day, like what's what's my hair to me? Like really, it's nothing. I, I honestly would give anything to help animals, whether it be farmed animals, wildlife, um, companion animals and so really you know it is only hair um, it is a little bit scary I'm not gonna deny um, it's not as if I'm walking around thinking I don't care or I'm not worried about it because there's definitely this little inkling in the back of my mind thinking oh god like all the thoughts have come through my head <laughs> I won't lie everything from you know like god what's that gonna look like what are people gonna think or say but I guess um, just on that I really do want to mention that you know I I really have am focusing or have focused on the bigger picture here. You know, what is my end goal? What's my purpose? Why am I doing this? And I know why I'm doing it. And it is absolutely to help these guys because they do unbelievable work. Like I couldn't even imagine the situations that, you know, they're, they're facing every day to be able to help these beautiful animals. So, yeah, I just, I guess, you know, there's been, yeah, there's been some interesting things said to me or comments passed around about, you know, like me going to shave my head and, and what like people are going to say or think. And yeah, it is definitely uncomfortable, but it is something that I would challenge people to, you know, think, think outside the square and don't be concerned or afraid because we have to do these things. We have to move into like the space where we feel uncomfortable or we fear fear sometimes because it's the only way we grow. So it is definitely going to be a challenge. I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, oh, I don't really care or I'm not worried about it because there is a little bit of me that is. But, you know, for me, I see the bigger picture and the bigger goal, and that is to help fund this ranger on the ground in Africa for a whole year. So that is what we're working towards. Um, and I guess the other thing as well is, you know, I think a lot of the time we feel especially when you're trying to raise money or help an organization that's overseas, you know, we can feel as though there's this big distance between us and that organization geographically, but also, you know, our ability to be able to help. So I really, yeah, also wanted to do this so that people, you know, consider that we can always do something like, even though we may not be able to physically help um, when there's a bit of a distance, but you know, there's always things we can do, whether it be fundraising, whether it be depending on the, the situation, but it could even be social media marketing or offering to, you know, put together like a um, 
yeah, like a fundraising event or a, like a drive for certain things. It might be for products or it might be for like items that they need. So, you know, there's always something we can do. And that's something I really, I guess, also wanted to focus on in this fundraiser is just getting people to think about, you know, how can we, how can you help an organization that may not just be around the corner or may not even be in your country, but you, if you have a passion for trying to help and make a difference, there's always a way, there's always something we can do to help. So yeah, that was a little bit of my, um, I suppose, drive for doing this as well. So I definitely challenge you to think about, you know, other ways that you can help organizations. So what's next? So this podcast is going live at the start of September and I will be calling on you guys to help raise money for the month of September. And I will be looking to shave my head when we get to the $3,000 goal at the end of September or start of October. So it gives us like four weeks basically to raise the $3,000. I know it's going to be a bit of an effort, but I really hope that each and every one of you will get behind this. You know, I understand that some people may not be in a financial position to contribute, but there's always something we can do. It might be that you share this, like you might share the episode, you might share the post that I do. You might send it to people that you know that might be able to help. Anything you can do to help get this out there would be so appreciated. And I would like to call on those of you who are in a financial position to donate. It is really simple. So I have a fundraising page where we can see the goal that I'm working towards and all the milestones along the way. So I will definitely uh, be linking that page in this episode. And obviously it'll be all over my social media for the next few weeks. So yeah, I just really call on you. I need your help guys with this. So please, please, please get behind it and yeah, reach out. I would love to hear if you personally now, if this has kind of inspired you to you know, think about doing something to help another animal organization. So guys, this is a pretty short episode. I guess I really just wanted the opportunity, you know, you'll see things coming up on social media, but it is difficult. As we know, with Instagram, we scroll through pretty quickly. We don't always sit and focus on someone's story or what they've written or what they've shared. So this was really a great opportunity for me to explain some of the background around why I'm doing this and how you guys can get involved. Thank you for being a part of this. I really hope you jump on board. I can't wait to see where this goes. And yeah, let's see uh, Let's see if I have a shaved head by the start of October. So thank you so much, guys. This is a great opportunity for me to just thank you once again for being a part of A Kind Life. We have this amazing community, as you probably have seen in a few of my posts recently. You know, I love to highlight what this podcast means to the community, but also to me personally. And yeah, I really do want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Some of you have jumped on to the podcast more recently. Others have been here from the start. And I thank all of you because I couldn't do this without you guys and your support. Even all the guests that I have on, I'm so grateful that people say yes. Sometimes I, I actually get a, a little bit starstruck or, you know, I think, how did I get these people on the podcast? But I think that is one of the beautiful things of our community is that, you know, we all work together and just, yeah, share the same passion and inspiration to help animals. So, yeah, I just really want to say a deep heartfelt thank you. I'm sure you probably already all have, but if you haven't, please subscribe to A Kind Life, whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to it on a podcast platform, please subscribe. Um, it means a lot and obviously it helps get this podcast out there to more viewers. So yeah, thank you again and take care and maybe uh, I'll see you when I'm bald. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you.